There it is. All right. Just another second. Hello. And it's almost done loading. Hi, everyone. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Happy Wednesday. We are halfway through the week. We're like halfway through the day. It's 12 o'clock. It means it's time for lunch. Uh -huh. It's my favorite time of day. Um, actually, I'm making some side dishes right now or like snacks. Um, so I am going to have to prepare some protein. This is not going to be my full lunch, full disclosure. You know how I am about balanced plates. Um, we were cooking. We cooked I don't remember what we cooked from here before, but we cooked uh, from this book once before, Cook With Me by Alex Gornichelli. 150 recipes for the home cook. And the last time um, that I was gonna cook from here, I was going to make the charred eggplant dip. And then I think the eggplant that I had went bad, so I, I didn't use it. I have eggplant, I have eggplant now. I ordered it grocery delivery uh, like a week and a half ago and it's, on its last legs, but it made it. <laughs> um, and I'm also making, open that boy over here. Nope, wrong one, wrong one, wrong picture. I just don't want to drop the whole book, which is what's gonna happen. Oh my gosh, I passed the bookmark. That's why I used a bookmark. Hi everybody. It's Wednesday and I'm feeling it. There we go, spicy brown butter ensemble potato skins. I'm using a different computer today, so I know it's a little... There we go. There it is. Um, they look amazing, which is why I have the air fryer out. You know that I fight with my oven. So, <laughs> um, so I'm going to finish the skins in the air fryer because I think it'll go better. Um, I roasted my eggplant and my potatoes in the oven uh, at 400 degrees. So that's already done, and I'm going to show you how to prepare all of these things. So we're going to start with the preparation for the potatoes, um, because while the potato skins are cooking, uh, then we will work on the eggplant dip. Right. Okay. So I'm going to put I'm going to put my book over here. Uh, let's see, let's see. I'm going to move this plate over here. Okay, so I'm going to tilt this down and show you my workstation so you can see what's going on so you don't need to stare at me all day. Um, <laughs> um, because it's more interesting to see what I'm doing because I know there's not a lot of counter space view in here today because of the toaster oven. Uh, so we're going to put it this way. All right, so what we're doing, the browned butter, the but, the browning of the butter actually happens while it's in the oven. So um, I'm gonna grab some butter and just give it a quick melt just to get it going. I think the recipe calls for like three tablespoons, but I'm using slightly less potatoes than uh, her recipe. So, but we do want enough butter to make the sambal sauce at the end. Move this to the side. I'm just gonna go put this in my microwave. We just want to get it started. We don't want to overdo it. Um, the recipe um, in the book does say that you can do this on the stove in like a big heavy bottomed pan and then you put the potato skins right in there and then put that into the oven. But I don't have, um, I'm not sure if I have a pan that goes into the oven and if I did I don't think it would fit in here. So I'm just going to microwave this and um, get it started. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and start cutting our potatoes. So, and I love this recipe because what we're going to do, they're, they're skins, and basically the recipe says you can set the flesh aside to use for something else. So I'm going to make mashed potatoes later. I'm so excited. <laughs> so I have a, a little container over here to collect the flesh for the potatoes. 
I'll let my butter sit in the microwave nice and warm. So what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to cut lengthwise into about six or so wedges. However, the cookie crumbles. These are still pretty hot, but there we go. See, oh yeah, they're super, super hot. Um, Nice and long. And I guess just like when you're making a potato skin, this one I can actually cut again, maybe. Uh, we're gonna leave some of that flesh on the inside just for structure and texture. Okay. These are like pretty big potatoes, so I might cut them again. Yeah, it says you can do six wedges, but I think I'm gonna get more. Come on, buddy. Ah, there's another one. I'll leave that one. All right, time for this potato. Hot. Still very hot. Okay. Um, potatoes are one of my favorite food foods, food groups. I always say potatoes are like their own food group because I love them. Not how it should be, but it's okay. this one but they are they're just so versatile um and i know i usually use a lot of cauliflower instead of potatoes or rice but cauliflower can't do this you can't make skins out of cauliflower sorry buddy Ooh, okay. this one's like ready ready to have the inside sticking out all right very hot okay so I'm just going to use a spoon and scrape out the insides. I'm going to start on this side so you can see better. Take one that's a little cooler. All right, so I'm going to kind of go in, but see I'm not going all the way to the bottom. I'm leaving some in there. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this in my pan. This pan will fit in this oven very nice. All right, just put that in the pan and then eventually we put the butter in there and that's kind of all it is. Um, you're supposed to use unsalted butter but I only have salted butter. Um, so I'll just make sure to be careful of my seasonings uh, later on. Okay, it feels great now. There are, I mean, speaking of potatoes being like my favorite food group, there are actually cookbooks that are just about potatoes, like potato dishes. Um, we have one at the library. It's something like smashed, fried, baked, or whatever. I can't remember the name of it. I just thought of it now, so I can't look it up. But it's actually, it's got a lot of good stuff. And there are actually a lot of um, potato cookbooks on Hoopla, too. I may have used one over the summer. I can't remember anymore. Okay, so I'm just kind of like gently scraping. I'm just getting this all into my bowl that is conveniently just off screen. That's a lot of potatoes. Maybe I'll save the mashed potatoes for tonight, uh, tomorrow night. <laughs> these, these are a lot of potatoes. I'm gonna have them for lunch and dinner. <laughs> Probably breakfast. And we don't need to be perfect because it's not like a potato skin that you're going to stuff. It's just a potato skin that we're enjoying for the crispy factor. Um, so it doesn't need to be perfect. I remember, I don't know, I think I've told this story before. I made stuffed potato skins at some other point with a different cookbook uh, during book cooks. But I tried, tried making it once before and I just, I think I over pre-baked them and it was so hard and they were small and it was so hard to get the flesh out and I, they just ended up collapsing. They didn't look like little boats. They weren't like little half potatoes. They were just really sad and uh, they did not make very good twice baked potatoes. Gently scooping it out. Oh, 
pan. I don't know if I should. I don't think so. I think it doesn't say that they need to be baked in a single layer. I'll double check that. I think so. It's a very large potatoes too. Okay. And all I can smell right now is I already pre-chopped garlic for the eggplant dip, and I it smells really good. Really, really good. I'll talk about the eggplant when we get there, but as usual, I didn't do it exactly the right way. That's because I didn't feel like setting anything on fire today. So we'll talk about there when we get there. Talk about that when we get there. Nice thing about doing this in the air fryer toaster, not only is it more reliable, it'll definitely be a lot quicker. Um, because my regular oven is super unreliable. more. Almost there. So I have not tried this recipe before and I've never tried anything like it so I'm wondering if they're going to be like really nice and crisp, if they're still going to be a little soft. Um, probably because I'm using the air fryer toaster it'll be probably have a really nice crispness to it. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be somewhere between a potato skin and a chip. That's my goal, but we'll see what happens. And that brown butter is just going to add a lot of really, really nice flavor. Oh, my cat is snoring <laughs> under the table again, as usual. Alright, here we go. A couple more. We're almost there. We're hanging in. We're hanging in. This is taking a while. That looks a little. We can go in the potato mashed potato file. All right. Almost there. Wow, I don't think you can hear her, but she's very loud to me. She is snoring wildly under the kitchen table. It's just what she likes to do. It must be nice to be a cat. Okay. All right, there we go. That's the last one. So I can go ahead and get my melted butter. I'll show you all of the potato flesh I have over here, which will be so exciting for making mashed potatoes, which I guess I'll do tomorrow. Look at that. Look at all of that potato. So I can make some mashed potatoes. Let me rinse my hands quickly. says, hey, I'm over here, find the table for you in the cookbook, um, yeah, it says add the potatoes in a single layer, skin side down, leaving some space between them. Okay, so let's remedy this. I do have another pan, which was housing the eggplant, so we'll switch that up. Single layer, side by side, make it nice. Much better. Okay, so I'll show you what this looks like. There we go. So this is how I have my potatoes, single layer, side by side. And then it says, um, just to get that melted butter in there as well. Okay, so I've got this melted butter. I'm going to make sure that it's on and around and just hanging out by all of these potatoes. I'm gonna make sure I'm just drizzling it on top. But also we kind of want to let them sit in it a little bit. Great, because if you were doing this the way the cookbook says to do it, um, the butter would kind of just be like everywhere. Um, 
I want to make sure that the skins are getting better because we want those to crisp up. Really, really, really want those to crisp up. That's the big thing. Right, and we can let that butter pool on the bottom. It's okay to have that excess butter because, like I said, that's going to brown, and that's what we want. So this looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my toaster oven. And let's see, what does she say? Oh, it makes 450, which is not what we're going to do here. So I'm going to do bake like 350 for 10 minutes to see this oven tends to run kind of hot. So there we go. All right, so while we're doing that, so I'm going to show you how to do this eggplant dip now. So what we need to do is, just like we do with the potatoes, I have a clean spoon for it. I'm going to chop this eggplant and we're just going to scoop out the insides and put it in a bowl. Uh, this is nice and cool at this point now. It did cut off some of my skin, so I'm not going to be super picky about how neatly I scoop it out. It's nice and soft on the inside. Like I said, I pre-chopped my garlic in this bowl already. You don't want to get all of the eggplant. So this is a charred eggplant dipper. It's supposed to be. Um, if you have a grill, like this is great for grilling season, you grill it over your open flame and get the skins nice and charred. She said you can even do it over an open gas flame, but I didn't feel like burning my hands or setting anything on fire today. So she also says that you can go ahead and just... Um, it's tricky. How are we supposed to do this? Eggplant's kind of tough. Okay. Just trying to wedge it in there. All right, we're going to do this different way. We're going to chop it up. Mm, it's supposed to be different. Anyway, um, you can also just let it cook, and if it chars when it's roasting, it chars when it's roasting, and that's nice, right? It says to scoop and then coarsely chop, but I feel like I'm going to coarsely chop because this isn't super, super soft. Okay, so I'm going to coarsely chop this eggplant. She says mix in a little bit of that charred skin. Um, so this is like baba ganoush inspired, but it's not like totally liquid. But I guess as you mix it and add some of the other ingredients that are just off screen, um, it'll break down a little. So I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to go for it. I'll just keep chopping it a little smaller. Um, I do love eggplant. Um, I probably could have baked this a little bit longer. Um, I study abroad in Italy when I was in college, just for a month. Um, and I always used to grab some fresh eggplant because it was just so beautiful and delicious at the market, uh, not too far from my house. And we used to make just fresh olive oil and garlic eggplant almost every night with dinner. It was so nice. So I do, I do love eggplant. But it can be a little tricky to work with because you do want to um, make sure you're using the right kind of heat if you're doing um, it in a pan because you don't want it to soak up all the oil. Alright, so as I coarsely chop it, um, I kind of thought this was going to be like a blender recipe, and it's not. I can hear my potatoes starting to sizzle in that butter a little bit, which is so fun. Just chopping, chopping, chopping. A lot of chopping today. It's not very exciting, I'm sorry. Um, if you don't want a lot of skin, you can kind of like a little a little fillet here get that skin off I don't really mind eggplant skin but I know it's a little tough so I'll do some and some not yeah I don't know if you can hear it but I can hear the 
You hear the potatoes like sizzling and wheezing and letting off some extra steam from any moisture that's still in there. Ooh, I see it. I don't think, can you see, yeah, can you see right over here? There's a lot of sizzling happening in that corner. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of the sizzle. Um, and then, so at a certain point, we're going to flip it, turn them over so that everything is in contact with the bottom of the pan for a good browning. Um, and at that point, I might turn it to the air fryer function um, just to get those skins super, super crispy. This one, some with, some without. Uh, so the other ingredients that we have here are paprika, lemon juice, some mayonnaise, um, tahini. There we go. That's the, I'm like, what am I forgetting? Tahini is like the most important one. Um, Kind of frying in that butter, which I guess is the point. Um, but using butter instead of oil, it just creates such a nice flavor when the, that butter gets nice and nutty and starts to caramelize itself. some ground chicken in the fridge so I'm thinking to myself okay what's gonna go really well how can I season that ground chicken to go with my potatoes and my eggplant I have no idea all right here we go yeah I don't know if I should have roasted my eggplant a little longer but like I said you know my oven is temperamental even though I had it in there for an hour it did not get as soft as I wanted it to, I guess. Yeah, still a little hard on the inside. Uh, I think my potatoes are almost ready to flip, actually. This oven is fast. But I like this oven better than my regular oven. <laughs> Almost done. Yeah, so much chopping today. This is not very exciting. There's not a lot of like active cooking. Sorry. But I think these recipes will be worth it. Yeah, it should have been fleshier. I might still blend it. Maybe we'll do that. sizzling happening in there. And I don't want those skins to burn on the bottom, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so let me put this to the side. I'm going to pause this and flip everything. I've got my trusty tongs right here. Oh, that was just about 10 minutes anyway. All right. All right, so there they are. You can see there's a lot of bubbling and oozing happening. Nothing's really crispy. We're starting to get some browning here, which is nice. That piece, this piece right here, that's starting to get nice and brown. And it's got some browning on the bottom as well. 
This piece needs more butter. Actually, my piece is getting really crispy and it's good. <laughs> so now we're flipping. So we've got the flesh side down to hopefully encourage some more browning, but I'm gonna turn this on air fry to get these skins nice and crisp. Not following the recipe at all. That's how we do in my kitchen. All right, let's go to air fry. And I gotta watch these closely so they don't burn, but I think that would be pretty good. All right, so back to our eggplant egg. I'm just rereading the recipe. Um, I should cook it for longer. Anyway, because it's not like falling apart. It's not that super soft. But anyway, here we go. Here we are. All right, so. We need some mayonnaise, some tahini. We need a lot of salt. Um, the recipe continuously says, like, don't forget to keep salting because eggplant needs that salt, but also that'll help draw some moisture. Um, we got the sizzle going already. Where's my salt? Oh, it's back here. All right, so I'm going to be very generous with my salt. All right, some paprika, just regular paprika, not smoked. That's a lot of paprika. spatula to get out my mayonnaise um, and as always I use a really clean mayonnaise it doesn't skeeve me out because it's just avocado oil eggs no sugar no weird additives um, so this is my mayonnaise of choice I do have another jar right here because we need a couple more tablespoons or maybe like another Uh, some lemon juice, we need that acidity, right? Don't forget there's already garlic in the bottom of the bowl. Um, it also calls for lemon zest as well, but I don't actually have lemons. Okay. And then the tahini, which is sesame seeds. it and I don't even remember the measurements that are in the book. Anyway, we're going to mix this all up. Alright, so because I didn't cook this the right way and it's not like falling apart and not super finely chopped and delicious and I could run it through a blender. Um, this is kind of like eggplant salad. I don't think this is how she invented it to be. Um, just checking out the skins. Looking good. I want them to get a little more brown on top. All right, let me taste. Probably gonna need more salt because the eggplant just kind of sucks it right up and. I need more salt and I need more acid. It is kind of like eggplant salad. Okay. 
but actually if I cooked it for just a few minutes longer and chopped it a little finer, it doesn't really need to be blended like a strict baba ganoush. Um, it definitely can be on its own like this, and she suggests serving it with pita. Sounds delicious. Um, I'm just going to serve it on the side of uh, my chicken. That up again. We'll taste for seasoning one more time. I think I added too much tea because I wasn't paying attention, but So I definitely add much more of the lemon juice. So the first thing you taste is the eggplant and the creamy, creamy tahini. And then the eggplant has kind of soaked up some of the lemon juice. And then as you continue to chew, you get like a really nice burst of that fresh acid to cut through the tahini, which is so nice. Um, it says at the end to use like a maldon salt, like a, like a seasoning salt, like a finishing salt with like thick, coarse flakes. Um, so put it in the serving bowl, top it with some nice flaky, flaky salt, um, and then go go in and, and just scoop it onto some pita, um, which sounds great actually. Okay, so I'm going to put this to the side. I'm going to take a look at our potatoes in the oven. I don't like to let them go for too long. I don't want anything to burn on the bottom either. All right, so let's see what we've got. Ready to see what we got? Let's see. Right. Ooh, they are feeling crisp. They're feeling crisp. They don't look super brown, but they feel like I can feel that texture. Ooh, look at that. Really, oh, that one's really crispy. Oh, this is nice. They're not overly brown, but they look pretty good to me. Wow, that's awesome. Um, I'm going to put them in for just another few minutes while I heat up some more butter to make our sauce. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to um, use the samba, sambal ula. I cannot say that, sorry. Um, I don't know what it is because I don't have it. The Sambal Olek chili paste, which I don't have, but a very appropriate replacement is this chili paste, sriracha that we, that many of us know and love. Um, and you're supposed to take the leftover butter from here and pour it in and mix it with the sriracha and that's, you can drizzle it on top or use it as a dipping sauce. So I'm going to melt a little more of my own butter. Um, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the skins that I still have on the side over here right into the oven and continue cooking while we're all, when we're all done. Um, it's just a little bit more butter, like another tablespoon, because this isn't a buttery sauce, but the butter adds some nice flavor and thins it out a little bit. And I'm just going to melt that really quickly. Put this in here, still on air fry. Just a few more minutes. I am pleasantly surprised by that um, eggplant dip, actually. It's so definitely more of an eggplant salad vibe, but it's delicious. All right, let's heat this up. We're getting ready. We're getting ready. I got the plate out. We're getting there. All right, let me put this in my fridge. It's kind of warm in here. We don't want this to melt. I'm going to put this up just a little bit because I have it on kind of low for air frying. Uh, we're done with this. Clean 
song on this album, Tahini. I love Tahini. It's the, the base. Everyone thinks that, you know, hummus is just chickpeas. You cannot really have hummus without Tahini. I mean, that's what, that's what makes it have such a great depth of flavor. There we go. My skin's again. I mean, oh, they look so good. I'm super excited for that. Sriracha. My spicy dipping sauce. Let me get my whisk actually for this. That will be better. I'm going to turn this off and let them sit in the hot oven. It'll still crisp up just a little bit. sauce. It's good. The butter adds a little different nuttiness to it, I guess, so it's not kind of straight like vinegar, astringent, spicy sauce. I kind of like it. All right. I'm going to grab my plate. This here. I'm just going to bring, put my skin straight onto the plate, and I'm going to put my other ones in there, but I'll do that when we're, when we're done. You could also then drain these on a paper towel or a towel um, to get rid of some of the excess oil. Yeah, these are really nice. Ooh, they look good. They look good and they sound good. Like you can hear the crisp. You can see some browning, but it's not too dark. Come on out, my friend. Come on out. There we go. Just trying out either. Okay. Look at those. Look at that. That is a fun way to have potatoes. It's neither french fries nor potato skins nor stuffed skins. It is technically potato skins. Um, but you can hear that there's some nice crisp to it. So this is pretty exciting. So I'm going to bring this up and we're going we're gonna to snack. Clean up a little bit so I can put my plate down. Add some scraps. All right, there we go. And let my fork go. Oh, I just threw my fork in the sink, didn't I? Mm -hmm. All right, clean fork. <laughs> now that all of the flavors from my eggplant dip, my eggplant salad, have been <laughs> sitting and marinating together for a couple minutes, I'm going to go ahead and taste it again. There it is. So you can see it looks more like, yeah, like eggplant salad. You know, potato salad, but eggplant salad. But it is Baba Ganoush inspired. And it is really good. You have to say these flavors are amazing together. Mm -hmm. Side dish, and it definitely, even though it's not a really smooth baba ganoush texture, it would still be great on top of a pita or a cracker or something. Like, actually, excellent. Okay, so I have my dip. I'm going to grab one of my little skins over here. They're pretty hot still, but look at that. That is super crispy just slightly browned. I'm going to go ahead and just use my dip. Oh, I should sprinkle a little salt over these too, actually. To make them really good. Just a little bit for flavor to bring out the flavor. I don't need a lot because again, my butter itself is salted. Um, and we're just trying to get just a little extra 
brightness to contrast these um, beautiful potatoes. Look at I, this, this is good. I'm excited by this. Wow, wow. You can really taste the butter. You can really taste the butter, not in the sauce, but on the skins. You can taste, it's kind of nutty. Uh, you can taste that little bit of dairy, but it's, it's got this really warm, rounded, fatty, nutty flavor on the skins. Wow. Mmm. These are so good. This might be my new favorite way to make potatoes. Wow. It's really good. <laughs> I'm really happy about how all of this came out. As always, as I'm making it, I kind of can't figure out what's happening. And I don't know how it's gonna turn out. <laughs> but I think it came, excuse me for chewing and talking. Um, I think it came out great. This is really delicious. Um, okay, so if I wanna cook it again, I'm gonna cook that eggplant for longer. Maybe I'll blend it so it's more dip consistency. She did say roughly chopped, but I think her eggplant was a lot softer than mine was. I think it broke down more as it roasted and mine didn't. Um, really good. Really good. I'm very excited by this snack time. Um, like I said, I'm going to make some protein for myself and have a full lunch. But again, this was the um, Cook With Me by Alex Shelley. This book is available for checkout. You can request it on bccls.org or you can call us at the library and ask to put a hold on it or a request in for you. I'll be bringing this back tomorrow um, so you can get it if you would like it from our library. Um, but that is it. This cookbook is excellent. Um, we, all, we all, everybody loves this cookbook. Uh, it's so many delicious recipes in there and it's just a lot of nice stories about what the recipes mean to her. She's one of my favorite uh, Food Network chefs, so I enjoy uh, her cookbook. So I'm going to go enjoy the rest of this food. I hope that you all enjoy the rest of your day. Um, and if you, uh, again, if you're looking for cookbooks and if you're looking for cookbook suggestions, please let me know. You can send me an email. My email is on the front page of our website. Um, and I can help you find a specific cookbook if there's something that you're looking for and you don't know how to search for it. I'm here to help. All right, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your lunch. Bye.